Record it and you'll Three, find two, one. <laughs> Boom. All right. Welcome to Dude, this is great. We're we're like a, we're like a whole minute early here today, Josh. This is I fabulous. Know. Right right on time, right? It's amazing. Right. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, yeah, we, we've got a lot to cover today, and I know you got a really tight schedule. Um, you know, a tight break here in 30 minutes. So I might go long, but we gotta let, let's roll into this here. Um yeah, so what's new? What's new on Thursday? Um, yeah, so I mean, lots of I, I got to tell you, I, I read some disturbing news out there today, Josh, that Domino's and uh, Papa John's numbers are through the roof because of COVID, you know, up like 20 to 30 percent in sales, right? 20 to 30 percent. Now, these are like big, big, big companies where like a five or a 10 percent increase is huge. Exactly. Um, people are eating the wrong pizza. <laughs> if there's more than one of them, I don't like it. That's my rule for restaurants. If there's more than one of them, I don't like it. That yes. is so especially true of pizza. Like there are 18 local pizzerias in your town, wherever you're listening to me from. Yep. And each and every one of them is better than Domino's. Well, here's what's, here's what's really interesting about that. Right. So I, I'm, I moved into the area from Philadelphia, right? And in Philly, nobody orders Domino's. Nobody goes to to Papa John's or Pizza Hut or whatever. I come out here, and I was having a hard time trying to find a, a good place to grab a pizza. Like it was, it was frustrating. sure you got to experiment, you got to try, you got to figure them out. But like once you know, well, yeah, once, yeah, once you know them, you're like, okay, I'm getting that pizza again instead of. Exactly. It's not like nobody has a good pizza. And, and you know what? Everybody's taste is a little bit different. The sauce or the cheese or the dough or whatever. But pizza, come on. Come on. That's, I mean, it's Dude, so, so we got it. We got it. We got a, oh, uh, maybe, maybe somebody here. And I've only, I'm a Lancaster County boy for like 11 generations, right? Yeah. So back to the year 1700. Uh, I check the Native American box every chance I get. So I, I figure if, if I was in this country a uh, hundred years before it was a country, I get to call myself a Native American. Yeah. So uh, Lidditz has a pizza rivalry that is like the Hatfields and the McCoys. There is Ooh. one of them is uh, Roma pizza mm -hmm. and the other one is, I forget what it is. Shoot. Okay. Um, but dude, like Gino's or no, not Gino's. Anyway, if you can comment in the, in, in, in the notes here, tell me which one you like, because it is, it is an off the charts. They're like right across the street from each other. Yeah. And if you like went to Warwick high school or whatever, you won't even set foot in the other pizza That's place. Awesome. Like if your friends go to there, you're like, I don't even, I asked two different people from Lidditz. I was like, Hey, so do you like this one? Or do you like this one in there? And people will say, Oh, I heard of blah, blah, blah. But I don't even know what you're talking about with this other pizza place. Let me ask you this though. Is, is the rivalry like Pat's and Gino's where they're both garbage or are they both really good? Pizza? <laughs> like Pat's and Gino's are just garbage, right? Like, right. So, I mean, I, I still think that Pat's is better. And I still think that, um, you know, I like eating Pat's because it's, uh, it's, you can taste what it used to taste like. But, you know, God bless them. God bless them for just deciding to mail it in. They're like, everybody knows us. Therefore, we don't have to try. Therefore, this is what it is. Well, and they, they got a great business. Like, they have right. a great business. It's The line's always 20 minutes. You know, if you're looking for a good cheesesteak in Philly, Steve's Prince of Steaks is the best. They're small. They're, you know, in Northeast Philly, whatever. Um, in Palmyra here, I've gone through every pizza joint, and a Sopranos is the best. Uh, nice. So, the local, check it out. All right. That's enough food talk. How, right. how about that for four minutes of pizza at the top of the hour? Love it. I love it. So, I mean, what do you, what do you think? How do you think this reverberates uh, across the board? Because as I look around and I, and you're saying, okay, these takeout places, um, you know, delivery pizza, maybe that's the key is like the delivery service. It's on point. It delivers, you know, quickly, you know what to expect. And maybe that's why people are looking at Domino's and looking at, at pizza. They don't have to get in the car and drive and pick it up. 
Yeah, I think that people just eat anything and uh, people are people are accustomed to hot garbage. You know, um, listen, you know, it's it's the reason why the Harry Potter books sold as good as they did, even though they're hot garbage. It's a reason it's the same reason that the desperate housewives of wherever you know, and The Bachelor, you know what I mean? As, yeah. as individuals, we all have little things that we're particular about. But yep. as a society, we like hot garbage. And, um, you know, our pizza preferences are, are a pretty good uh, indication of that. I want to throw a uh, shout out here to a buddy of mine, Jabbar Fairweather. Haven't seen him for a while. And he just hopped on the show. Jabbar, what's up, man? Um, yeah, so... Let's jump in here and talk about integrating technology into your marketing campaign. Right. So we're all this week, we're talking about marketing. That's and right. uh, it's, it, it was one thing that everyone asked us for, and they wanted us to cover in this show. Uh, Josh and I come to you every day here at noon uh, on a couple different Facebook channels, and we're interested in giving people real, applicable, actionable uh, knowledge for what's happening today in the central Pennsylvania real estate world. Uh, the brand is Real Estate Hackers. That's right. And the whole goal is just helping people invest in real estate. I have a business, a property management business that will be helped by that. Sure. Josh has a business, a hard money business, um, you know, uh, hard money bankers that will right. be helped by that. Sure. But really what we want to do is like, I have fun helping people invest in real estate. It's also how I pay my bills. I also love making money and everything like that. But helping people invest in real estate is, is just so much fun. So if you have a show topic or a series or something that you think we need to talk about more of or less of, don't be afraid to hit us up in the comments. Don't be afraid to hit us up, uh, you know, on, in private chat and other things like that, because we're, I mean, Josh and I can just call each other and talk to each other on the phone. We're doing this show for you. So exactly. you've got to tell us what it is that you want. Real quick before you get into con content, Josh, you've been delivering a lot of this content. You've been coming up with a lot of this content. It's funny. My kids today, they said, Daddy, do you, uh, do you have another one of those uh, Facebook Live calls uh, at 12 today? And I said, yeah. And my my 11-year-old uh, son says, Daddy, it seems like you do most of the talking on that. Show. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a word in edgewise here. <laughs> Listen, I get it. <laughs> well, I think that I do most of the intro and extra stuff and you deliver most of the content. Hey, I, I do what I can. You know what I mean? Right. I, it's funny. George, George Beatty. I did a video a couple years ago on, on Facebook and George, he starts telling me, he's like, that content was so great. But man, I wish you weren't so darn boring. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I got to bring you in for a little spice. I, people say to me all the time, "Dude, you're so entertaining," but I don't learn a darn thing talking to you. <laughs> hey, it's a good combat, uh, good combination. <laughs> all right, so let's jump in here. Look, if, if you guys, if you've done any marketing, probably the most well-known and most used marketing, um, you know, across the board with real estate investing is direct mail. Would you agree? Right. I mean. It's, it's Absolutely. pretty straightforward. Yep. Um, one thing that always bugged me about direct mail, and you know, if you um, it, when yellow letters first came out, um, you know, you could increase this, but th what killed me is that you get a one percent, two percent. If you get a two percent response rate on a normal mailing, you're a rock star. That is a great, right. you know, that's awful. That's so much money going out the door for nothing. And even if you're doing really super cheap mass mailings and it's only costing you know, 35 or 40 cents to mail out, you know, a hundred thousand pieces, if you're getting a 1% a response rate, you know, what you're really paying is, you know, $3 and 40 cents for a call, you know, which yeah. is not terrible, but whatever. So what we're going to look at here is taking the leads that we have and converting them into appointments and also setting ourselves up with those appointments so that you don't have to do a lot of the hard work, a lot of the hard work and the, the, um, I don't know, the prep work for the appointment is done before you even get there. Um, all right. So let's take a look at this. Uh, I got two quotes here. The first one is this, this is, as I was doing some research for the show, one thing that blew my mind is the amount of advertising that we're subjected to as, as Americans every day. Oh, absolutely. Right. Think about this. Digital marketing experts, they think that we're getting between four and 10,000 advertisements every single day. 
And think about the ones that you remember. It certainly isn't a hundred. Right. Right. Like that's, that's 1%. So the, the, um, this kind of goes in conjunction with the rule of sevens. So like it, you, uh, your prospect, it's got it. They've got to see your marketing, um, or hear from you seven different times. And, Ideally, in seven different ways before they're going to take action. And well, before they're going to make a decision. Yeah. Before they're going to make a decision, it might be a decision yes or a decision no. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So let, let's look at a old school offline marketing strategy. There's some online here, but let's say this is the like within the last uh, I don't know eight years ago, right? Eight years ago, when I was doing. Um, a, a lot of direct mail. I mean, we were probably sending out 20,000 pieces a month, something like that. Okay. Every campaign that you were, that you were looking to do, you would, if you're following the seven, seven touches, well, that's seven, you know, seven mailings per list. So if you space them out every two weeks, you space them out every month, whatever, Say you have seven uh, seven different mailing uh, mailings that go out, and they're different campaigns and timing and all that stuff. But now you're talking about seven different expenses, seven different stamps, seven different you know campaigns, all that kind of stuff. And I wouldn't, I would say, you know, you probably don't want to stop that. You might want to reduce it to like four or five today. But let's just say you you're sending out seven pieces. Each time you send those pieces out, you want to do something different. You don't want to send the same postcard, the same letter, the same message. So you're going to kind of mix it up and you want to you want to um, customize it to the people that you're talking to. Right. Right. So in, in the beginning, you're just introducing yourself and you get the low hanging fruit. You get the people that they were going to call you anyway. You just happen to be at the right place at the right time. They pick up the phone and call you. Right. And then you're following up and you're explaining what you're doing, why you're better than the competition and telling them about what you can do for them and all this stuff and hoping that they pick up the phone and call. Uh, like that's a lot of effort over a very long period of time. Now they pick up the phone, they call you. And during that first phone call, the whole objective is, well, for me, it was always two things. Number one, to get them off the phone as quickly as I could if they weren't worth, you know, if they weren't right. going to and number two, separate the suspects from the prospects. That's right. And and number two, if they were worth, you know, pursuing, I wanted to get some basic information and work them into an appointment. But just as often as not, people don't want to talk. They right. don't know who the heck they're calling. Half of the phone calls are like, "Hey, who is this guy? You know, why did I get this postcard? Why are you reaching out to me? Are you trying to steal my house? How do you do business? What are you? What's your story? How do you work?" That's right. Why are you mailing me from a PO box? Like, you know, like you get all kinds of questions, random stuff. So during that first phone call, it's like an introduction. You talk to them, maybe you get some basic information about the property, about who they are. And a lot of times I, I know from personal experience, a lot of times I wrote people off when I shouldn't have. They just didn't want to give me the information I wanted. And at the time, I had so many leads, it was like drinking from a fire hose. So, hey, look, I didn't get the low-hanging fruit. We'll move on. Okay? But now, market, you know, marketing's gotten expensive. Oh, yeah. And it's competitive. It's a competitive marketplace right now. And so Marketing's gotten expensive. And also, as the, as the, as the market has improved, um, deal, deal profitability has compressed. That's right. Exactly. Thank you. That's better better uh, explanation, I guess. But th the bottom line is now, instead of that 1% response rate, maybe you get a half or a quarter of a percent and transitioning those people on the first call from a phone call to an appointment has become more and more difficult. But here's the real difficulty, right? Let's say that, you know, you've got an email marketing system already set up with, you know, with the old school way. And you say, all right, let me just get some basic information. I'll shoot you an email with some more information. And you put them into a sequence. And over the next six, eight, 12 months, they get an email a month from you or every two weeks. And it just says, hey, this is who we are. And, and it just kind of reinforces who you are. That's great. But there's never, you're not really giving them more information that you send them in the postcard or you sent them in the, in the uh, letter. And so, yes, it added some some credibility. It added some follow up, but ultimately, the follow up came by sitting down, calling through your list, calling the people back, and developing that relationship. Well, that works if you have ten leads or a hundred leads, but as time goes on, 
it becomes more and more time intensive, more and more expensive. And if you outsource it, you get less and less of return on your efforts. So, you know, it worked. But ultimately, you get the appointment, you go out there, and you've got to do so much credibility, credibility building when you go out and you start negotiating. Before you even get to the point where you're talking numbers, you're building rapport. You're telling them about how who you are and what you are. And really, if they don't take it at face value, there's nowhere for them to go to get more information. So at the end of the day, you can sit there for two hours talking to somebody and never come to a conclusion and they say, oh, let me let me think about it. Let me get more information, whatever. Unless you're a great closer, that makes it really difficult to go in and get the job done on the first call. All right. So now let's look at today. This is a humongous difference. It's a it's a way for you to cultivate a heck of a lot more leads, a heck of a lot larger of a percentage of that list that you're building and route people in a way that is going to keep them constantly informed of who you are, what you're doing, how you can help them, and constantly building, be building um, your reputation so that at the end of the day, when you go out to look at the property, they already know who you are because they've been watching you for three or four months. They've been seeing Facebook updates. They've been getting your emails. Maybe they've gotten a text message or two. They, there's a lot of credibility that's built out and put in place. So when you walk in the door, now we're talking about evaluating the property, negotiating the price and closing the deal. That's a heck of a lot easier of a focal point if the people are informed and they're ready to go. Um, so let, let's take a look at, at kind of what this uh, process looks like. All right. So you send out a mailer, Judah gets the mailer and maybe he calls me, maybe he doesn't. Let's pretend he doesn't call me, but he's got a house that he's been thinking about selling. So he says, all right, hmm, who's this guy? Who's this company? Who's this guy, Josh Weidman? Let me, he's got a website on here. I'm going to go check out his website. On the website, there's a picture or there's a video of me and my wife sitting there. And we start explaining what we do and how we help owners and how we want to work with them and how we're local and right around the corner. And, you know, if they want to stop by our office or they want to give us a call at any time, go ahead. Great. So he's like, all right, that's pretty interesting. I know there's a link on the page that talks about, um, you know, problem tenants. And Judah just so happens to have a rental property that the tenants, they haven't paid him in three months. And he got a call from the police that they have, they're have they suspected of selling drugs out of the house. And he's like, what? Selling drugs out of the house? This is all, you know, it's all this kind of stuff. So he reads it. And he, okay. That's interesting. But then his wife comes in and, and she's like, hey, let's, let's go have dinner. So he puts it down and he walks away. He lost the postcard in the meantime. Postcard's gone. Well, you know, rewind five years. He just has a postcard. That's the only way he's going to be able to contact me. And, and now we're done, right? But in this case, because he went to my website, because he went to a specific page on the website that relates to um, problem tenants, he's got a marketing pixel for problem tenants follow-up campaign. What this does is you in, within Google, you can set up a remarketing campaign that doesn't cost you a dime unless they click on your ad. And right. In that, right? And they can be videos. They can be images. Um, they can be GIFs, you know, whatever. But I can create targeted marketing for a specific group of people who visit a specific page on my website. I can do the same thing with Facebook. So now, you know, Judah goes back and he's hanging out and he decides he's going to, he's going to scroll through YouTube, which just happens to be the second largest search engine on the internet. And right. So he goes and he's looking for, you know, how to fix a screen door that his kid broke, right? Whatever. <laughs> and while he's, I love that that's the analogy that keeps on uh, coming up. What's that? <laughs> I love that that's the analogy that keeps on coming up. Well, I mean, these are these are my stories, right? right. I'm, I'm superimposing on hey, you. Right? Uh, any writer will tell you, write what you know. Well, and there you go. So, all right. So now he goes and is searching for this video, and two things happen. If he's sitting in front of his computer, he's going to get an ad that is superimposed on on um, the website from something called AdSense. It's a way yep. for private website owners to sell ads to Google to advertise on their website. 
So whether he's going to YouTube or, YouTube or whether he's going to John's Fix It Shop, you know, to look up a part, but let's just say that he goes to YouTube and he sees an ad that is uh, up in the right hand corner. He's like, oh, yeah, that's right. That, that guy sent me a postcard. Oh, I remember that. Huh. That's right. He and his wife. Yeah, that, that guy, that tenant really is still a pain in the butt, but I, I'll deal with that later. So then he goes to Joe's Fix It Shop online and he sees another of my ads right on Joe's Fix. Man, this is really interesting. And now he starts doing some more research and he finds my Facebook page. And on the Facebook page, there's a bunch of little videos and there's a couple, um, you, you know, additional pieces of content that are really relevant to him. You know, how to sell your house without an agent, how to um, how to evict a tenant, a problem tenant, um, you know, in the least amount of time. How, what, what's the best uh, course to negotiate with a tenant to get them to leave so you don't have to pay an eviction attorney? You know, all of these things, all of these videos, you know, they could be articles, they can be anything. They're either on Facebook, they're on my website. I post them on uh, YouTube videos, whatever. So he's like, man, this guy really knows what he's talking about. I'm going to give him a call. So guess what? When he calls, I talk to him. I get some basic information. I introduce myself. He says, oh, yeah, I was on your website. I checked this out. I checked that out. I'm getting information about the property. I'm getting inf information about him. And it's going into my CRM. Well, with my CRM, now they're going to he's going to be put into an email follow-up sequence. I can check a box that says, yeah, um, this guy is interested because his tenant is uh, is a problem. Or I could just say, hey, look, this is uh, this is just somebody that called with interest. Whatever. I can categorize it any way I want. And now he's going to get emails from me, maybe every two weeks, following up to see if I can set an appointment. Just so happened when he called me, he was going to the beach. He was going to the beach. He wasn't going to be around for the next two weeks. And so I couldn't schedule the appointment, right? So he's in the sequence. And every two weeks, he's getting an email from me. In addition to that email sequence, I'm also putting it into my follow-up campaign. And the follow-up campaign is threefold. Number one, every time I put out a new piece of content, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on, you know, on LinkedIn, whether it's on, on Google, I'm going to create an email that spotlights that piece of content. And it's going to go out to that list. And so he's not just seeing my information. You know, he's not just seeing these ads following around the internet. He's getting emails from me. He already talked to me. And now I'm going to integrate some messaging and I'm going to integrate some voicemail drops. Those, like most of this stuff, I don't even have to follow up with. I don't, I only have to set it up one time. And if it's just Judah calling me, it makes no sense to do it. <laughs> right. If, but if you're I'm, doing less than 10 deals a year, do not do this. Right, right. And, and this, maybe is, this is the kind of stuff. Here's the problem, people. This is great, wonderful, and awesome. And I've done this. And, I've, and I, I used a, a process a software called Infusionsoft to mm -hmm. um, automate um, most of this stuff. I've done these marketing campaigns. It's what I do. It's like it's fun for me. Yeah. However, most people, they get caught up and learning about this and the education about this is the entertainment and therefore they never take action or um i'm working on, on on some different you know investments right now and i have an analyst on my team and um one of my guys who's actually a new zealand partner said hey watch that analyst because he can spend three to four days working on the modeling for how this works and it can take away from sales effort. It can take away from calls down range. So this is one of those things that I'm so glad we're covering this in the detail that we are, but it can absolutely distract you from taking action. That's right. That's exactly right. And guess what? You don't have to build this whole thing. You don't have to build the entire process and everything in one sitting. In fact, if you do, it's foolish. We talked yesterday about the foundations of your marketing campaign. Right. That's where you start. You set up the foundation. And now you see that, hey, you're getting phone calls, but you're having less and less time to follow up. So maybe you add a, an email voice drop to everybody that's contacted you and you haven't converted into an appointment so that once a week they get a, 
an automated voicemail that their phone never rings. And it just says, Hey, this is Josh Weidman. I'm calling from, you know, Josh Weidman home buyers or whatever. Um, just to touch base and follow up with you. I have some appointments um, available for next week. Give me a ring. If you have some time to sit down and guess what? The people that are going to call you are going to be the ones that are ready to sit down with you next week and have you come out and see the property. Little things like that. It doesn't take long and it doesn't cost a lot of money. So, I mean, that that's uh, that's a big deal. Um, all right. That we covered, <laughs> we zipped through, you know, three hours of content in, in 10 minutes there, but I wanted to, uh, I wanted to share Natasha, um, Berkheimer, Natasha Berkheimer. Her comment is the comment of the day. Um, she's really thrilled with her content. I love it. I love self praise. You know, it's perfect. Absolutely. Um, Natasha, I'll reach out to you after the show and uh, we're going to be sending you a free copy of uh, Property Hackers, my my new book from January. So um, look, guys, keep showing up. We'll keep coming with the content. Um, e, or, uh, Judah is uh, a property man manager with Slate House Group. Judah, you want to jump in? And just yeah, I just, I just wanted to say something really quickly here because this is about Slate House Group and it's about myself. Uh, I am the um, administrator, moderator, whatever, admin, admin, that's the word I'm looking for, for the Central PA Real Estate Investors Group. And someone was in there the other day asking about a property manager. I try never to answer those questions, um, but, uh, but two people, people said you should call Judah Hoover. And one of the guys said you should call Judah Hoover because number one, Judah Hoover will be the best fit. Number two, if Judah Hoover is not the best fit, he will find you what you need. And I just want everyone to know that Josh and I, part of the reason we get along as well as we do, even though our personalities are slightly different, both of us have the mentality that if you need an appraiser, we're going to help you out with that. If you need a yeah. flooring company, we're going to help you out with that. If you need a CPA, like I just look, I've spent 20 years making connections for people in the real estate world. And I just, I just love helping people. So whatever we can do, certainly I run an awesome property management company. We've got 135 employees. We manage 40, we manage 4,000 units across four states, but if we can help you in any way, if you need advice, if you need a second set of eyes on a deal, if you need anything, reach out to Josh, reach out to myself. That's exactly right. I mean, uh, like Hard Money Bankers is uh, is my company, Hard Money Bankers Essential PA. We're a private lender. And, you know, I I was talking to somebody this morning that I um, I do business with a lot. I mean, we, we flip houses together and things like that. And uh, I was talking to him about an investment. He was looking at a small bank that has bankrolled a handful of his projects. And he said, they just stopped lending, you know, and that's, that's something that we're seeing a lot with investment properties is that the, um, a lot of the banks have backed out of that space temporarily, but right now, fewer and fewer lenders. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the hard money lenders that were around 90 days ago, they're nowhere to be seen. They might be right. But they're not funding, so we we've never stopped funding. Um, you know, we are uh, we're, we're a self funded uh, lender, which means that we can make a decision on underwriting very quickly. We can fund the deal um, within twenty four hours once uh, once we have an approval. And um, you know, I I think anybody that's that's worked with us would say that we've got some of the best service around. We got a great back end, and ultimately, you know, we want to help investors make money. Like we, we want this economy to get back to gangbusters. We want everybody to get out there and, and start flipping some houses and, and uh, building a rental portfolio. And, you know, if we can help in any way, reach out, let us know. We'd, we'd love to be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. So tomorrow's show uh, is going to be our news wrap up. Uh, we, every week we spend Fridays talking about uh, the days of the news, the um, market conditions that we're currently experiencing for both uh, real estate investors and realtors and anybody who's connected at all to the real estate world. And uh, there's been a lot of really great news uh, coming out this week that we have touched base on. So uh, it is also coming up on the end of another month. And so we're going to do uh, talk about, you know, trends and, and things like that. We're also after Memorial Day. So uh, the unofficial start of summer. Uh, I know that my kids have school next week, and I think uh, only four days at that. So there's going to be a lot to talk about and talk about what that means uh, going forward. And that's what we do on our um, 
Plus, you know, a lot of smoking and joking and carrying on and guffawing uh, that that we do here on our uh, on our show typically, but that is taken to a higher level on Fridays. That's exactly right. Um, if you got anything that you want us to cover, reach out to Judah or I. We'd love to, uh, you know, continue providing great content. We're going to uh, jump back into marketing on Monday, and uh, we should have a really fantastic guest next week. All right. Awesome. You See guys everybody. Have a- have a great weekend. We'll uh, see you tomorrow. Take care.